Hey data fans, Reed here. Today I'm going to give you a quick report layer optimization tip and show you yet another useful way to use shadows to reduce the number of unique objects on a report page, which will help optimize load times and a few other things. So let's go ahead and hop into Power BI and get started. So those of you who have been following my videos for a while, you'll know that I like to include some kind of a title section up here at the top, typically a combination of a title information with a refresh date, and maybe some information as well in cards and even some sparklines that I might include up to there. Now, historically, what I've done usually in the background for a bit of aesthetics and design is I'll usually have a main box here. It can be a text box, it can be a button, but it's something that I use in the background followed by a lower border just to provide a color splash difference. And if we come up to view and go over to the selection pane and take a look into here under the title section, you'll notice that I actually have the background and the lower border as separate objects in here, two text boxes. And one of the issues is that the more objects you have on the page, it just renders a little bit slower in the browser. So anytime I find a new feature and a way to optimize to reduce the number of unique objects, I will do that. I will do that because it works towards overall report layer optimization. So I've actually found a way to combine these two. Let's actually come over to the new report page here. Now, as you can see, it looks pretty similar. If I open up the title section though, take a look. We have a title background here. Now let's see what happens if I hide this. Both the color for the upper section and that lower darker purple border are showing and hiding when I hide this single object. So the way I've accomplished this, if I, the title background and open up shadow, the shadow itself is what is providing that lower border. If I turn this off, you will see that it has now disappeared from there. So keeping that on, that is what is in fact actually creating the border itself. And the way that I've accomplished this is I have used a preset. Instead of bottom, any of these combinations here, I have done a custom bottom. I have the size of zero and the blur set to zero, angle at 90, which means it points straight down, and a pixel distance of eight. Now, the reason I'm using a pixel distance of eight is I typically resize things using the snap to grid option up here, and each snap, so to speak, is eight pixels wide. So that same eight pixel distance is also the distance between any of these other objects down here as well. So that allows it to have a perfect size border with the appropriate gap of another eight pixels between the remaining visuals onto the page. So coming back to this again, opening up the shadow. So that is a great feature of the presets down here is to use the custom option because you can configure it in so many different ways. And this is actually the third way that I've found to use shadows. I've also done a couple of other videos. One, which you can see here, where I actually use shadows to create a really thin border around various objects. And I've also used them to create interesting frames for buttons as well when you are using a button navigation experience. So I'll link you to both of those other shadow use cases down in the description below. But for this one, it's just one additional way that I have found really clever use cases for shadows, especially when you turn off any of the blurring or anything else, and then it just becomes a solid line where the pixel distance determines how thick that line is. So I really like that I was able to optimize this one. And if you find any other ways to use shadows or some interesting use cases for them, please drop that into the comments. But overall, I am continuing to find that this is a very useful feature outside of just typical shadows because of the fact that I can choose where on my object I want it to basically be exposed and show in any of those directions. And with all of that configuration of blurring and other stuff, some very interesting use cases for shadows. So hopefully you found this useful. Please don't forget to like, comment, or share this video. Now, if this is your first time to my channel or you want to see more of these awesome videos, please click that subscribe and notification button. Also, feel free to show your support by becoming a channel member. Last but not least, you can download the file for today's video from my blog files page using the link down below. So until next time.